Hello everyone, welcome back to this video series on clinical SAS programming. In this video, we will see what is meant by TFL shell annotation and why or when do we do it. So it is the process of identifying or marking the variable names required for different components in an output. It also involves specifying the name of the input data set and any associative filter conditions that have to be used to generate a particular TFL. So when or why do we need it? So programmers generally tend to take two different approaches. First one is called prospective and the second one is called retrospective. So in the prospective of approach so what we do is even before we create our add-on specification we annotate the tfl shell so what is the advantage of this approach is so it helps identify all the variables that are needed in an add-on data set so once we have the tfl shell so if we will be creating our add-on data sets to create those tfls actually so if we are starting with tfl annotation so it will be helpful in identifying all the variables that are needed in an Adam data set and we tend to not miss creating any variables required for any of the outputs. Then the second advantage is it helps TFL programmers to identify the variables required to generate the output. And the second approach is retrospective approach. So after creating your Adam specification, so again, so you do not formally annotate your TFL shells, but you would go through all the TFL shells and then create your Adam specification. And then you annotate your uh, TFL shells to help the programmers to identify the variables required to generate the output. Two approaches can be taken and companies take either of the approaches based on their convenience. So we will now see how uh, an example of a table, annotated table and an annotated listing shell. So here is an example of an annotated table shell. So this table is about treatment emergent adverse events by primary system organ class and preferred term. And this is being asked to be generated using safety analysis set in which we are presenting the primary system organ class and preferred term in this first column. And then we are summarizing it within each treatment, treatment A and treatment B, and along with the treatments. So we are also summarizing it in a total column. So this is the basic layout of the table. So in order to program this, so a programmer would need to know which variable needs to be used to identify the treatment emergent adverse events. So the TFL shell is annotated to use the filter condition where TRT EMFL is equal to Y to identify this set of events. And then as this needs to be uh, generated for safety analysis set, we are indicating that we can identify the safety analysis set subjects using this filter condition of SAFFL is equal to Y. And uh, it is mentioned here that this output has to be generated using ADAE data set. And then for the values present uh, to be presented under this primary system organ class, so we are being asked to use the values from AE body system, so AE parts is variable. And for the preferred term, so we are being asked to use the values from a variable named AE decode in ADAE data set. And in order to identify the treatments of each subject so we are being asked to use the variable trt01a from adae dataset so this helps the programmers to quickly identify and start programming so now let us see an example of a annotated listing so here we have an adverse events listing and again this is based on safety analysis set so as this is an adverse event data set so it is the input data set is indicated as adae and in order to identify the safety analysis set subject, the filter condition is provided here, which is SAFFL is equal to Y. And then here we are presenting the listing based on each, uh, for each treatment, group by each treatment. So we have the label actual treatment and the possible value here. For the possible value here for actual treatment, we are being asked to use the variable TRT01A. And then we have some columns uh, that are to be presented in the listing. So we'll go one by one. And this column called country subject identifier. So we are being asked to use the variables country and subject ID. And then for age, sex and race. So we are being asked to use the variables name, age, sex and race. And then for serious event, we are being asked to use the value from AESCR. 
and then we have this column which is presenting the reported term the preferred term and the system organ class so for these three variable uh, in pieces of information we are being asked to use ae term ae decode and ae boards as variables respectively and then for start date and time and the study day so we are being asked to use the information that has to be pulled from uh, aestdtc and aestdy and similarly for this column of end date time end relative to reference period or day so here we are being asked to use the values coming from aeendtc and aeendrtpt and aeendy variable and then we have a column called duration in terms of days so for this column we are being asked to use the values from aedur and then we have next column which is capturing the information related to severity of the adverse event causality action taken with the medication and other action taken so for these four pieces of information we are being asked to use the values from aecv aerel aecn and aec and oth variables and finally for the outcome variable we are being asked to use the variable ae out so if we do it prospectively so we will make sure that all the variables are present in uh, adam specification and if we are doing it retrospectively it will help the tfl programmers to identify the variables to be used for each of the output so we would repeat it for all the shells present in a study so this is why we do annotation and there can be different approaches whether on when you create it retrospective or prospective prospective handles it even before creating your adam data sets retrospective is only meant for uh, providing instruction to the tfl programmers Thank you for watching and keep learning.